Hello Blazers, welcome to episode 110 of UAB Green and Told, original release Monday, November 6th, 2023. Through our podcast, we are given the opportunity to share stories from members of the UAB community. Want to check out past episodes? Visit alumni.uab.edu slash green and told, Spotify, or the Apple Podcast app. And while there, leave a written review so more alums can find us. I'm Greg Berry, a UAB alum and director of communications in the Office of Alumni Affairs. It was a journey of a lifetime. This summer, Haley Cotton traversed nearly 200 miles down the Cahaba River as she enjoyed incredible scenery, countless creatures, and serenity that only a few of us can imagine. That's a week and a half of being alone in a kayak, just taking in nature's beauty. But for Haley, it was more than an adventure. The Cahaba Project is a way for her to further immerse herself as a storyteller while connecting with the unbelievable surroundings the river has to offer. I love the outdoors and I've been getting into kayaking and the Cahaba River is like, it's in our backyard. It's a gorgeous river and I want to learn more about it, but I also want to kayak the whole thing. That sounds like a fun little adventure, right? Armed with little more than a kayak, a phone, and her journal, Haley basically became one with the land, sharing experiences with the numerous animals around her. There they were kind of like munching in the kudzu and they were staring at me and I was staring at them and both of us were just kind of like, okay, what are you doing here? But as Haley will share, the Cahaba Project just as well could never have happened, never been even imagined. That's because she started her educational journey wanting to study biology. And math hit me back very hard. <laughs> and I went, oh no, <laughs> you mean I have to do calculus one, two, and three to get uh, the degree that I want? One of my all-time favorite philosophers once said, rivers know this, there is no hurry, we shall get there someday. Powerful words from who else but Winnie the Pooh. But those words ring true. There is no hurry. Just ask Haley Cotton. This past summer, the two-time alum and current instructor enjoyed an adventure of kayaking down the Cahaba River. She wasn't in a hurry. She was just taking what the river was giving her. But for someone who moved here and there as a kid, adventure has always been waiting. I was actually born on the east coast of Florida in Vero Beach. Um, my mom's side of the family is from down there. Uh, but my dad's side of the family is all from central Alabama area. So we did a little bit of time in Florida, moved to Alabama for a bit, then up to Ohio for six years. Uh, and then back down to Alabama, where I've stayed since I was 12. With all of the bouncing around, did you find it hard to find yourself and really discover who you are? Because here you are going in and out of friend groups. Right. That was uh, pretty difficult growing up. And of course, like leaving Ohio felt like the end of the world because all of my friends were there. And, you know, I was like 10, 11 years old at the time. Um, so that felt tragic to be sort of displaced. But I was really sad to leave our, our backyard. So in that backyard, we had uh, a little bit of acreage, but so many trees. And there was a creek that ran uh, around in the back. So uh, I was always that kid that was outside like all the time. You mentioned a little bit about being outside, wanting to be outdoors. Academically, what were you like? I was the kid who uh, was always like, I got straight A's and everything like that. I loved learning. I loved reading in particular. So my parents had a rule where, you know, bedtime was a certain time, but if you wanted to stay up and read, you could for an additional 30 minutes. So I did. <laughs> And frequently when the lights, like at that point it was lights out, uh, no, out came the flashlight. And so I would read way past, um, you know, bedtime lights out. Uh, and that just became like an entire different world that I jumped into. And I really love stories and that ultimately contributed to me being now an English professor. What kind of stories piqued your interest? Ooh, anything that had to deal with like adventure or mystery, right? So um, like the boxcar kids and then throwing it back to like Happy Hollisters, but then uh, Nancy Drew and the Hardy Boys and um, any of like the R.L. Stein books, uh, anything that uh, was like Encyclopedia Brown, right? Like he was the coolest. He knew everything and he was able to like put everything together, um, which I thought was just amazing. Like if you could amass all of this knowledge, people would like come to you and you'd be able to like solve problems, um, which also probably contributes to being a professor. You opted to go Jefferson State before you came to UAB. What was the thought process and, and why did you choose there before coming to UAB? 
so I wanted to go to Auburn. I wanted to go get a zoology degree. Uh, I wanted to work in ecology and conservation. So naturally, like first choice was Auburn because they're the only uh, school in the state that has that degree. But my parents were like, well, with you having been homeschooled, you need kind of like a transition halfway type deal thing. I actually started out with a biology path, right? And that was great until I hit math and math hit me back very hard. <laughs> and I went, oh no, <laughs> you mean I have to do calculus one, two, and three to get uh, the degree that I want? And right around the same time, I was also taking a British literature course. Um, and the professor was absolutely amazing. And she was transformative, not only in the way that she taught, but also in the way that she listened to the class. And I it really respected her. Um, and so as I'm sort of thinking like, OK, here I am. I want to do this thing. I want to work in like conservation and have like sort of an advocacy route. But at the same time, I was also working at an animal shelter. And I realized at the heart of what I was doing that um, my advocacy was through education and through telling story, right? So actually like face to face with people and telling them, hey, here's the problem and here's why it matters and doing that all through the lens of storytelling. Um, so I realized that in order to like work in conservation and ecology, like how I wanted to, I didn't necessarily have to have that biology degree. Um, that I could do it through education. So in kind of like a huge flip flop, I went, all right, I'm going to be an English major. And now being an English major, that sort of opened up the um, uh, the schools that I could go to a little bit more. And UAB was close to home. And it turned out to be one of the best decisions that I have made um, for myself and for my career. Because once I got into uh, UAB, I really found a home. I found a sense of belonging. Uh, so that's how I kind of like got into English at UAB. Once I was getting towards the tail end of my undergraduate degree, I actually wound up in uh, Alison Chapman's Shakespeare class which was in and itself transformative experience and actually led to me joining the English department as a graduate student. And as a graduate student, I was a GTA, so um, a graduate teaching advisor, and got to actually teach in the classroom while I was still a student. And that hooked me. <laughs> I was uh, ensnared. Um, just getting to work with the students and being able to like relate to them the things that I love. So uh, my focus in graduate school is creative writing, and that still is my focus. I uh, am a poet, so um, and am right now am teaching creative writing classes, and that's pretty awesome. I have absolutely loved it. You mentioned that UAB felt like home. What was it that made it feel that way? It was just a sense of belonging. Um, the fact that the, here were other people who were also interested in things that I was interested in and they were up for adventure and for meetings. So in 2011, when I started undergraduate at UAB, we had a, a poetry class, right? So that class was with Adam Vines. And those people who were in that class, we started meeting outside of class, um, around campus, across the city, and just started creating like our own little community of writers. And those people are still my friends today and some of my best and closest friends. And in doing so, like we took a lot of the same classes together because the, the major itself is um, like the creative writing concentration is small. So we wound up all taking classes together uh, with each other. The class sizes are smaller for creative writing, but uh, they have just like absolutely wonderful instruction. The teachers are all in on everything and so helpful for wanting to make sure that their students succeed, right? So it's not just about the course itself. It's about what goes beyond the course. So everyone knows that UAB is the university that you come to if you want a job, right? And it's because professors are not just focused on, hey, this is the course material, have at it. It's, hey, how do we transfer this knowledge outside of the classroom? How are we bringing in the city? How are we bringing in community partners? How are we making sure that your skill sets are able to um, go above and beyond just getting a grade and actually engaging um, with a future and with uh, a community outside of UAB? You set out with zoology and the plan was to originally go to auburn math it stinks you didn't want to do it so you segued into english and you did it with a very non-traditional approach a lot of people look at english and it's like okay what are you going to do with it 
you found an outlet with that. What are you doing with it now to kind of tie the conservation with the English? So the Alabama State Council on the Arts has a grant system that uh, allows for individual fellowships to be awarded in uh, a bunch of different fields, but creative writing is one of those and poetry is a subset of that. Uh, so I applied for this and you have to kind of like pitch a project idea. So in doing so, I was kind of like, well, I love the outdoors and I've been getting into kayaking and the Cahaba River is like, it's in our backyard. It's a gorgeous river and I want to learn more about it, but I also want to kayak the whole thing. That sounds like a fun little adventure, right? Uh, so I put together this project proposal that I would kayak the river in order to write poetry about it in sort of like a photojournalistic, multimodal sort of presentation. And they said yes. So uh, I wound up getting the money and I was like, all right, I've been given this chance and opportunity. And also I know that UAB's core curriculum is changing, right? So the core is going to be what all students have to take in order to accomplish their degree. Uh, and in that UAB is wanting to include more city as classroom courses where the focus of the course is actually like Birmingham. How do we make Birmingham a part of the classroom? So uh, my mind was turning with all of these ideas like, OK, if I'm already going to be really focused on the Cahaba, um, how am I going to bring the Cahaba into the classroom? So in my preparation for my trip and everything, I got to know the Cahaba, the people at the Cahaba River Society really well, which also they have ties in um, with my department. Um, one of their members of the board happens to be my poetry mentor, uh, the chair of my department. Her husband uh, worked as their educational director for a really long time. So we already have like these ties and relationships um, with the river itself and with like Alabama conservation. So uh, I planned for several months to take this trip. I actually wound up taking it back in May. So from May 25th to June 4th, uh, 11 days, I was out on the river, just kind of going solo. I had uh, an entire team like watching me, like watching my location and they were there to back me up if I needed it or bring me equipment or pull me off the river if there was some kind of emergency. Um, so I did that trip and it was absolutely transformative. But the whole time I'm kind of like making observation as a poet so like writing down the experience in order to share it with others because one of the uh, ideas that the Cahaba River Society really sort of uh, encompasses is the idea that how can you care for a thing if you don't love a thing right like you have to love it and learn about it first before you can actually care about it and work to preserve it so and how do you do that well the heart of connection is story right so here i am writing about this experience um on the cahaba and what it's like to be a woman kayaking alone uh through this wilderness um on this amazing natural resource and all the time I'm like composing these little poetic lines and stuff, but uh, also thinking ahead to like, how do I engage this with my classroom? So this semester is uh, when that core kicked in, right? So I am piloting a writing in Birmingham course where we are partnering my class with the Cahaba River Society to rewrite and repackage their uh, Shane Halsey Clean Education Program. The Clean Program uh, works with third grade through college students in the Birmingham area to get them out on the river, to do river walks, to teach them uh, about pollution points, to teach them about um, water runoff. What is our drinking water like? Um, how do we sort of gauge the river's healthiness, right? So what is the health of a river? How do we go out there and take samples, right? So they're really getting the, the students out there down to the water's edge um, to have fun so that they can have this educational experience so that we can actually raise up um, future river defenders and people who care about the river and want to recreate on the river, which just kind of feels like full circle because my homeschool group did do a clean education trip back when I was about 13 or 14. So my first introduction to the Cahaba was with the clean program. Um, and now here I am with my students getting to uh, write curriculum that will go out to service more clean education students. What was that trip like? Because it's 180 miles and I imagine it's not done in a single day. Mm -mm. No, it was uh, challenging, but not over much, right? So it was one of those things where 
it was physically exerting, but also by the time I was done with it, I was like, that was great. Can I go do that again? Like, can I just start back at the beginning? There was a lot of unknown on the trip because I had not done anything like this before. I had kayaked several hours at a time, right? The most being like a nine hour kayaking trip. And I had done plenty of overnight backpacking. So I figured if I could do those two things, if I could kayak for a while and also uh, backpack camp for a while, I can put them together and do like overnight camping and kayaking, right? Well, yeah, I could, but there were like lots of challenges that popped up along the way. I knew I would have to deal with five different dams in the course of my trip. So the Cahaba River is the largest free flowing stretch of river in the state. Alabama has a very damaging system of dams, right? It prevents fish migration. Um, and a lot of the dams that we have no longer serve a purpose. So they're just kind of out there inhibiting our wildlife flow uh, while giving us nothing in return. And those five dams that I would have to encounter are all back to back to back just below Highway 280. So in my very first day, I had to portage several of those, which is where you take all of your stuff out of the water, you drag it all the way around, and then you relaunch. It would be like I'd come up on a dam and I could hear it and I could see it on Google Maps at like my little blue dot approaching that break in the water, but I couldn't see see it while I was on the river because the river in front of and the river behind the dam just kind of form a seamless line. I'm going to take it slow. I'm going to take it one step at a time. I'm going to go the most safe route possible because I am alone and I don't need anything. I don't need to take like unnecessary risk. My, uh, I knew that my mama would probably not like that, right? Uh, even if it takes extra time, even if it takes extra effort, safety was key for that just because I was alone. So the first day I put in 18 miles with those five dams and that was like right off the bat, just exhausting. Overall, I really had no idea where I would be spending the night each night. It was just a matter of kind of conversing with the river, which when you're in that sort of setting and landscape, there's a conversation that goes on between you and your surroundings, right? Navigating you know, dangers, potential dangers. Um, of course, there's a bunch of wildlife. I got to see so much wildlife. There were all sorts of hawks and herons and gold eagles and bald eagles and deer, so many deer, uh, turtles out the yin yang. Um, I saw wild hogs. I saw the family baby armadillos. I had a bobcat walk through my camp one night. I didn't see it, but when I went to bed, there were no bobcat tracks through my camp. And when I woke up the next morning, there they were. And I was like, hmm. oh, I got to see synchronous fireflies too, which are actually pretty rare. I was out camping, it was dark and I was about to turn in for the night, but I didn't have any cell service. So I had to climb up the riverbank to, to try and get a couple of bars just to let my team know that I was safe for the night and that I was good. And I looked up and around and there they were just blinking all together in in the night right underneath the, the bank of trees. And it was just the coolest thing. I imagine as you're floating down the river, you're taking in all the sights, but you're also jotting a few things down. How did the you know, how did that kind of coexist, the enjoyment of just the surroundings and jotting down notes because you're doing something greater in the end? I had sort of two ways of taking notes. Um, I had a waterproof journal that I kept that I logged as sort of like a trip journal at night. So those were going to be the details uh, throughout the day of like the water level, the flow, the temperature, what time I launched, uh, what I was eating, uh, really sort of like baseline experience sort of. And then I did this and then I did this. Uh, but throughout the day, my cell phone sat on top of my life preserver, right? So uh, that I could access it quickly, get to my maps and everything like that. And if I happened to notice something along the river that was like, ooh, that's cool, that's, that's a good observation, or that's unique, or I need to look that up some more, or uh, that's something that I need to preserve for later, I'd pull out my notes app on my phone and just like type it in. So I actually have pages on pages of notes apps of just observations in sort of chronological order, right? What happened day by day, and they're just like brief little notes about maybe I saw something poetic, like the relationship between something. Or at one point, uh, I saw these two deer on the bank, and they were a velvet deer, so their antlers were covered in that um, early spring velvet. But the the sun sort of caught the antlers behind them, and that velvet like 
when it's backlit, it glows at, like a halo around those antlers. So there they were kind of like munching in the kudzu and they were staring at me and I was staring at them and both of us were just kind of like, okay, what are you doing here? Um, before they kind of like tuck tail and run off. Uh, so any kind of moment like that, I was just like waiting for kind of like an open receptacle, like, okay, River, just show me what you got. Show me who you are so that I can go back and, and tell the others. Would you do it again? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, uh, yes, I want to do it again. And if it weren't for the fact that I have to teach three times a week, I would be out there already doing the thing. <laughs> That's Haley Cotton, a two-time graduate of the UAB College of Arts and Sciences, where she earned her bachelor's degree in 2013 and master's in 2016, both in English. Today, she is an instructor at UAB, as well as the managing editor of the Birmingham Poetry Review and founding director of the Spark Writing Festival. As someone who loves the university and adventure, Haley definitely has a great idea of what it means to be a blazer. Community. It's absolutely community. So welcoming and involving others, bringing them to the table, um, saying you have a space here and no matter like what your skills and talents are, you are needed and you are valuable. UAB is an incredibly diverse campus and I think we're very intentional about that, about recognizing our diversity and being like, okay, we all have these lived experiences. How do we come together and work with those lived experiences to craft a larger experience that is beneficial for us all, that gets us moving down a path, that gets us, like, if we have a vision, how are we enacting that vision? How are we including everyone in that vision? How are we making space for people who are usually left out of that vision, right? How do we look around the room and say, who's missing? And how do we draw them to the table? How do we make ourselves welcoming? And how do we pause and say, oh, well, we could do this a, a different way, a better way. Um, how do we innovate? So tradition is important in some sense, right? But also making sure that we're not so tied to tradition that we're uncomfortable with innovation, right? Making sure that we are looking for what is the vision that best benefits us all and includes us all and is uh, welcoming. That's my idea of being a blazer. Be sure to check out past episodes of the UAB Green and Told podcast. Listen in at alumni.uab.edu slash greenandtold. Have a story to share or know someone who does? Email greenandtold at uab.edu. Finally, be sure to follow us on social media. Just search UAB Alumni on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Thanks for listening, and until next time, go Blazers! <laughs>